Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning, sir. Good evening, sir. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I think we have finished the reaction with metals in acids. Reaction with metals we finished. Then reaction with metal carbonates and metal bicarbonates we finished. Yes or no? Hello, students in meeting. We have finished the reaction of an acid with metals, reaction of an acid with metal carbonates, metal bicarbonates. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Today we will study reaction of acids and bases. Reaction of reaction of acids and bases. Today we, today we are studying reaction of acids and bases. Okay. So that is also one of the method to detect the acidic nature of a substance. If a particular substance is acidic in nature, if it reacts with, I mean, if it is acidic in nature, it has to react with the base. Correct? So when acid reacts with base, that reaction is called neutralization reaction. Okay. So let us take one simple example. Sodium hydroxide is a base. Any yes or no? Sodium hydroxide is a base. Any When it reacts with Hydrochloric acid. When it reacts with hydrochloric acid, HCl, it gives what? NHCl plus H2O. It gives NaCl plus H2O. Now, NaOH, when you prepare NaOH solution, aqueous solution, NaOH activates plus HCl activates plus NaCl activates. Okay. All these are active solutions. When we prepare NaOH active solution, what happens? Yes. NaOH. That dissociates completely into Na plus plus OH minus. Correct? Right? It dissociate, it dissociates completely into Na plus and OH minus. Similarly, if you take HCl, that also dissociates completely into H plus plus Cl minus. NaCl that also dissociates completely into Na plus Cl minus. Correct? 
Now this reaction, NaOH plus HCl gives NaCl plus H2O. That reaction also can be written as NaOH that dissociates into Na plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous, right? So Na plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. Then we can write HCl. HCl means H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous because in aqueous solution they dissociate completely. So here I can write H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Okay. Na plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Here NaCl means Na plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous plus H2O. In this, this Na plus in NaCl came from Na plus from Na1. So this Na plus and this Na plus get cancelled. Because this Na plus is the same Na plus which were there in Na1. Now the Cl minus present in NaCl that came from Cl minus present in HCl. So that cancel out. Now what is there? This is H plus plus this is OH minus. Gives H2O. H plus plus OH minus gives H2O. This is neutralization reaction. When acid reacts with base, that reaction is called neutralization reaction because H plus from acid that reacts with OH minus from base. Gives water. Hope that's clear. Hope that's clear, everyone. Yes, sir. Okay, can you please write down this? Can you please write down this? So I raise this? Yes, sir. Everyone, shall I raise this? One minute, sir. Over. Yes, sir. Reaction of acids and bases. So you can write down the point. Right? Acid. When acid. 
आंसर तो क्या इफ when acid react base the reaction is called when acid reacts with base the reaction is called neutralization reaction when acid reacts with base the reaction is called neutralization reaction all neutralization reaction in all neutralization the reaction is the reaction is always between x plus of an acid and and oh minus of a base to form water so in all neutralization reaction the reaction is always between h plus of an acid and oh minus of a base to form water all neutralizes all neutralization reactions are all neutralization reactions are exothermic that means all neutralization reaction they liberate heat okay so all neutralization reactions are exothermic that means they liberate heat when neutralization when neutralization reaction is between when neutralization reaction is between strong acid strong acid and strong base so when neutralization reaction is between strong acid and strong base the amount of energy released the amount of energy released is 
always constant. Is always constant. See here we we know that all neutralized reactions are exothermic, right? That means they release heat. Heat is nothing but energy. They release energy, right? All neutralization reaction they release energy. If the neutralization reaction is between strong acid and strong base, it may be like between HCl and NaOH. It can be between KOH and HCl, right? So all strong acids and strong base. So if it is between strong acids and strong base, then any which way it is exothermic, that means it releases heat. So if it is between strong acid and strong bases, then the amount of heat released or energy released is always constant. 52.2 kilojoules of energy will be released and that value is not required for you. I'm just telling you. So the amount of heat released is always constant if the neutralization reaction is between strong acid and strong bases. Hope that's clear. Yes, sir. The amount of yes, energy is always constant. This is because actually why it is always constant? Neutralization reaction between neutralization. Neutralization reaction between strong acid and strong acid and strong base. Is always is always H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives H two O equilibrium. Since it's always between H plus and OH minus to form. H2O liquid, the neutralization reaction between strong acid and strong base is always constant. Shall I raise the first point? Yes, sir. Second point? Yes, sir. So you can conclude from all these points. In neutralization reaction, in neutralization in neutralization reaction. Acid reacts with the base to form salt and water. So, in a neutralization reaction, acid reacts with the base to form salt and water. Can we take up two examples? Can 
Can we take a few examples? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Shall I raise this, everyone? Yes, sir. We'll take up few examples. First one already we discussed. First example. NaOH plus XL at this. In this year, at this plus water, NaOH plus HCl gives NaCl plus H2O. Correct. Huh? Any other example? In on the other one, can we take a pure? Or we can take up any of it plus HNO3 aqueous gives NO3 aqueous plus H2O. NaNO3 aqueous plus H2O. Or we can take NO3 Aqueous plus H2 is so called aqueous. Here's what? Yes, it gives what? NaOH plus H2 is so called? NA2SO4. NA2SO4, correct. Sodium sulfate? Correct, no? Yes, sir. NA2SO4. Plus H similarly we can take A M hydroxide B O H twice plus which acid we can take is such an okay can I take? Barium hydroxide and twist plus balanced, sir. Pardon? Double equation not balanced, yeah. right? Sir. Okay. Na2SO4 means 2 NaOH. Then 2 H2O, right? Yes, thank you. Now it's balanced, right? Yes, sir. It's balanced, no? Yes, sir. Oh. Barium hydroxide plus HNO3 gives this barium start this two temperature with HNO3 twice. HNO3 twice plus H2O. NO3 twice plus H2O. Since it is NO3 twice, it is 2 HNO. Correct? 
correct? Then 2H, 2H, 4H, two oxygen atoms. So it should be 2 h two o Yes or no? Then Da O H twice acquiesce plus H two S O four acquiesce gives what? Barium sulfate E S O four acquiesce plus Barium sulfate 2H2O. Barium sulfate plus 2H2O. Yes or no? One more reaction you can take AOH aqueous plus carbonic acid H2CO3. Aqueous. KOH, KOH plus H2 protein. It gives potassium carbonate H2CO3. H2CO3 plus H2O. H2CO3, that means it should be 2 KOH, right? A two CO three two H that means we are to be two H reaction is that all these are the examples for neutralization reaction when acid reacts with base that reaction is called neutralization reaction. And remember, neutralization reaction is always exothermic. That means in neutralization reaction, there will be liberation of heat. And if acid is also strong acid, then base is also strong base, then the amount of heat liberated is always constant. Any strong acid you can take, any weak acid you can take. So now the question arises, sir. What are strong acids? What are strong bases, right? That is what we learn next. Next topic, strong acids and strong bases. Okay. Hope that's clear. Shall I raise this? Yes, sir. Everyone, shall I raise this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next is strong acids. What are non strong acids? What are all weak acids? That's what we'll study now. Okay. Next is a strong acid. Strong acids. What are strong acids? An acid, an acid which dissociates completely.
which dissociates completely in aqueous solution. In aqueous An acid which dissociates completely in aqueous solution is called strong acid. An acid which dissociates completely in aqueous solution is called strong acid. So you can write generally 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 inorganic acids are strong acids. Generally, inorganic acids are strong acids. Example, example, HCl. HCl that dissociates completely into H plus and Cl minus in aqueous solution. Therefore, HCl is a strong acid. HNO3 that also dissociates completely to H plus and NO3 minus. Then H2SO4. That also dissociates completely into H plus and sulfate. Therefore, H2SO4 is also strong acid. HCl, HNO3, H2SO4, they are all strong acids. So now, can you write based on this? Can you write weak acids? Very good on evening. Very simple. In weak acids, how we can define an acid which dissociates incompletely? An acid which dissociates incompletely. Incompletely. In aqueous solution is called weak acid. Generally, Organic acids are weak acids. Yes, sir. Is may not on the board? Weak acids. Or should I write on the board? Weak acids. Hello, everyone. All right, sir. Shall I erase this? Yes, sir. Everyone, shall I erase this? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Weak acids. Acid. 
Sanskrit which dissociate incompletely. In and this solution. An acid which dissociates incompletely in aqueous solution is called is called weak acid. Generally, generally organic acid are Generally, organic acid are generally organic acid are weak acid. Generally, organic acid are weak acid. Let us take a few examples. Acidic acid, COOH. If any substance that dissociates incompletely, then it is represented like this double arrow, opposite. Okay. So if any substance dissociates incompletely, then it is represented like this. Hope that's clear. Sometimes it's also called reversible. Okay. CH3, COH, reversible. CH3, COO minus IBS plus H plus IBS. Even phosphoric acid, H3PO4. H3PO4. Though it is inorganic acid, ionizes incompletely or partially. That is why we use the word generally. Generally, inorganic acids are completely. That doesn't mean that all the acids will completely dissociate. Generally means few acids will dissociate completely. There are some exceptions. That is why we use the word generally. Then though this is phosphoric acid, inorganic acid, it ionizes or dissociates. Both are the same word. Dissociates incompletely phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid, H3 pure 4, 3 H plus, plus pure 4, 3 minus. And hydrogen cyanide, HCN. HCN. That also ionizes partially H plus plus CN minus HCN. Or carbonic acid H2CO3. That also ionizes partially or dissociates incompletely. H plus and CO3 minus. All these are the examples for weak acids. Hope that's clear. Shall I raise this? Hope it's clear to you. Yes, sir. Strong acids and weak acids. What are strong acids? 
an acid which dissociates completely in aqueous solution. That is strong acid. If it is strong acid, we show only one aroma that gives product. Weak acid that dissociates incompletely. Then we show like this, represent like this. Okay. And these are the examples for weak acids. Hope that's clear. Everyone hope that's clear. Shall I raise that? Mata draw. Shall I raise that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next topic is basicity. Basicity of an acid. Basicity. Basicity of the acids. What do you mean by basicity of the acids? The number of the number of replaceable. The number of replaceable. The number of replaceable hydrogen atoms. The number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present present in the acid. Present in the acid is called the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present in the acids is called basicity of the acid. Let me take an example. Example, HCl. Now HCl has got only one replaceable hydrogen atom, right? Therefore, its basicity equals to one. Basicity equals to one. HNO3. This acid also has one replaceable hydrogen atom. Therefore, its basis P also equals to one. H2SO4, sulfuric acid. It has got two replaceable hydrogen atoms. Therefore, basicity of sulfuric acid. This of sulfuric acid equals to two. Correct? Phosphoric acid. H3PO4. Phosphoric acid has got three replaceable hydrogen atoms. Therefore, it's base three. And even you can take carbonic acid, H2CO3, its basicity. Then 
Remember, in the CH3COH, there are four hydrogen atoms, but all the four hydrogen atoms are not replaceable. Otherly, the hydrogen atom is now replaced. Only one hydrogen atom can be replaced, that is here, which is present at the last. Only this hydrogen atom can be replaced. Therefore, CH3COH, it's a base. Basicity equals to one. Okay. So what is basicity? It is the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present in the given acid. If there are one replaceable hydrogen atom, then basicity is one. Two replaceable hydrogen atoms, basicity is two. Three replaceable hydrogen atoms, basicity is three. Example for tri-basic acid. Example for tri-basic acid. Phosphoric acid. Example for di-basic acid. Sulfuric acid. Carbonic acid. Example for mono-basic acid. HCl, HNO3. Correct? All these are the examples for Mono basic acid, mono basic acid, di basic acid, tri basic acid, all these classified based on the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms. Hope that's clear. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone understood. Everyone understood? Yes, sir. Everyone, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Another doubt is yeah. No, sir. Sir. Okay. Ah. Sir, can you explain this which you have written on the board? Sir, I had internet problem, sir. I couldn't read it. Okay. This is called base city. What do you mean by base city? Base city is nothing but when an acid reacts with base, okay, when an acid reacts with base, then basic radical of a base replaces hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom present in an acid. So simply you can remember like this. Base is nothing but the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms. It should be replaceable, replaced by something else. So the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present in the acid is called basicity of the acid. Understood? Yes, sir. Number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present in the acid is called basicity of the acid. Take HCl. In HCl, there is one hydrogen atom can be replaced. Therefore, basicity of HCl is 1. Since its basicity is 1, it is also called monobasic acid. HCl is called monobasic acid. HNO3. Here also there is one replaceable hydrogen atom. Therefore, basicity of HNO3 is also 1. Therefore, it is called monobasic acid. Got it? Yes, sir. Then H2SO4. H2SO4 has got two replaceable hydrogen atoms. Therefore, its base is two. And it is also called dibasic acid. Phosphoric acid, three replaceable hydrogen atoms. So its base is three, and it is called tribasic acid. And CH3COH at last. There are four hydrogen atoms, but remember, all the hydrogen atoms are not replaceable. Only one hydrogen atom is replaceable that is present at last. Okay. Therefore, basicity of acetic acid is one. Therefore, acetic acid is also monobasic acid. 
hope that's clear yes sir so that's all about the acids and in our next class let me explain what are all the different indicators used to detect the acids then we'll move on to bases okay hope that's clear everyone understood yes sir yes sir yes sir still do you have any doubt no sir okay thank you thank you everyone thank you sir